The destination is just ahead. In Hawaii. A long journey, almost complete. Just when you finally get to where you're going, you realize this is really just the beginning. And as you gaze out at the Hawaiian waters in front of you with your extended family, you know what happens out there will define who you are and what you're made of. It's an irresistible lure that brings you to this moment. You find yourself on the big island of Hawaii with 1,800 others just minutes after dawn almost silent. Maybe dreaming of images that beg the question, are you ready? Ironman Triathlon World Championship, Kailua Kona, Hawaii, 2005. The cannon has sounded to begin the 140-mile journey with a 2.4-mile swim. And yes, the distances are ridiculous. The ocean is being generous. The conditions are good. But nothing comes easily here. The swim in the Ford Ironman has a definite kick in the face, survival element to it. The pros are given a head start, and the race begins to reveal itself. Germany's Farisal Sultan is out quickly and able to keep an eye on his competition. Nearby Simon Lessing, a legend in the sport, who's done everything except win this race. Everybody's already been up for hours. Registration began at 5 a.m. After arrival, some of the 5,000 volunteers gave everybody a number. They used to just hand write on the digits. So this is sort of high tech like everything else. This guy is getting the number you want. It means you're the one who won last year. Germany's Norman Stadler. He can really ride. There you go, sir. Thank you very much. Good luck. American Tim DeBoom won here back in 01 and 02. Then he lost his mojo, and today the search continues to refine it. Peter Reed is a star, winning three times starting in 1998. A strategic error may have cost him number four last year. And after back-to-back -back top tens, Faris Al-Sultan is back for the trifecta, or maybe more. On the women's side, 38-year-old five-time champion Natasha Bodman of Switzerland brings her smile back to Kona. And she will have to contend with Australia's Kate Major, considered to have Queen of Kona possibilities. And McKeeley Jones, an Australian icon, making her longer-distance Ironman debut. She's a big X-factor. The physically challenged race includes former Navy SEAL Carlos Molina, who says this is his last one. He'll be missed, 
But Carlos knows you have to check and double check your ride because you're on your bike the longest and you don't want something mechanical to ruin your day. Kate Allen does her due diligence. Fast forward this time back to the race as the swim continues in its organized chaos. From the pier where King Kamehameha once ruled the islands, following huge red buoys around the media boat turnaround and back, 2.4 miles to T1. The leaders stroke in single file. Japan's Hirokatsu Tayama has the lead. Simon Lessing and Faris Al Sultan are right there. In the women's race, veteran Joanna Zeiger is the first to get to the turnaround, with Monica Kaplan and Didi Greisbauer, making it America 1 2 3. The swim is not a strategic part of the race. You can swim like crazy, build up a 30 second lead, and it's gone in a blink on the bike. It's basically just the beginning of emptying everybody's fuel tank. From the leaders, to those who want to win their age group, to those who just want to get through this Ford Ironman Triathlon World Championship, it's about one mile old on the big island of Hawaii. Which means only 139 miles to go. The Ford Ironman Triathlon World Championship is brought to you by Ford, built for the road ahead. By Hawaii, the islands of Aloha, and by E-Trade, E-Trade Financial. It's just about time for the leaders of the Ironman to start thinking about hitting the road. Out of the Pacific is Hirokatsu Tayama of Japan. Getting through the transition with little pause. His problem is that triathlon legend Simon Lessing is only seconds behind. And the pack, not much further behind him. As race leader, it's a true luxury to have the entire transition area to yourself. But the leaders of the swim usually don't enjoy the honor for long. In a moment, Tayama will know what it's like to be hunted. The next challenge, lava and wind. As far as you can see, here's Phil again. One 12 mile ride leaves Kailua Pier and joins the Queen K Highway. The turnaround is made at Harvey. The rolling group with some steep climbs tops out at 646 feet above sea level. It returns through the lava fields to Kailua Kona. Third in the swim, Faris Al Sultan is having a quick transition while all round triathlete Simon Lessing is cheered away. Al Sultan from Munich, Germany, third here last year. Meanwhile, back in the bay, the first women are leaving the water with Joanna Zeiger setting the pace. Zeiger comes from the sport-hungry hotbed of Boulder in Colorado. The last time Joanna finished here was in 2000, and she was fifth. Behind Zeiger is another strong swimmer, Monica Kaplan. Monica Kaplan has made the best transition in the tent and is now in the lead, heading for her bike. While in this group, Ruta Beeky from Belgium is there. Canadian Peter Reed has won this crown three times, but was beaten last year. He's ready now to learn and has a new plan. Last year, my issue on the bike was I was worried about the pre-race favourites. I wasn't acknowledging who was doing well on the day and I let some guys get away that were having great days. So this year I'm basically gonna make a decision race day on who's ahead. So this year it's just about keeping an eye on who's doing well on that day. Well, last year's champion Norman Stadler is doing all right and here's one rider Peter Reed will certainly keep a close eye on. Swim ace McKeeley Jones leaves the water with third best time. Meanwhile, already leaving transition is Didi Griesbauer from Boston. With a lead of more than two minutes, now comes a near six-hour bike ride. So a couple of minutes is an advantage, but no more than that. With the second-best swim time, Faris Al-Sultan is slicing through the air on a near-perfect day. He appears up for the chase as he picks off Simon Lessing, 
who has got away from transition a little bit quicker. Keely Jones, like Peter Reed, will be wise to ignore no one. Rest assured, you can win this title on the bike. miles the Ironman is being led by Faris Al Sultan, a German Iraqi who has seen all faces of this world championship since he finished seventh in 2003. Now the 27 year old has the chance to better his third place of just a year ago. Determined to hold his quarry in sight is the Dane Torbjorn Sinbala, another who knows that if the cards fall right he can win. With the face of a stalking line, Peter Reed is determined to underestimate no one this time. Time spent on his bike in Arizona is now paying off. An American with a big reputation is Tim DeBoom, the winner twice and a best time of 8 hours 29. A far cry from the 11 and 3 quarters it took Gordon Haller in 1978. All are chasing one man, Faris Al Sultan. Defending champion Norman Stadler trained with German Tour de France winner Jan Ulrich, but for this modest German, he was not always a star. I thought I would stay in my little town, being one of the 700 people, doing a boring job. But then I started traveling with the national team in Germany, and I saw the world, and uh, here I am. The weapon is my bike bike part. That's where I put the minutes on the other athletes. They tried it last year to catch me on the bike, but maybe this year it's not that much wind. So yeah, maybe I have only 18 minutes or 19 or 10. Now I'm the world champion and, and, and they know I, that I won one of the biggest races in the world. But now there's another rock on my shoulders to win again. There are so many little rocks I have to carry with me now. It's an honor to be the defending world champion. It is also enormous pressure for, as the defending champion, you carry number one, an inspiration to repeat in itself. One by one, Stadler moves up. His target, though, is still Faris Al Sultan. Two determined men know the Ford Ironman World Championship is an even greater challenge. First, Mark Herrmans, who was sixth in 2001 as an able-bodied athlete. That was before a training accident broke his back. The second man is Carlos Maleda, a former Navy SEAL wounded in action. Both now face the same 112 miles as the able-bodied athletes. It is Mark Herrmans who leads first in this intense rivalry between the two. Carlos Maleda is now in the transition and heading for his hand cycle, which is ready to go. Final adjustments, and the open road awaits. Hedemund is already heading out towards Alihi Drive. But for Carlos Maleda, there's going to be a slight delay. As the two-time cycle Ironman world champion, who holds the course record, has gone slightly off course, but help is at hand. Meanwhile, top swimmer Dee Dee Griesbauer is making the most of her early morning trip around the bay. Turning professional this year, she's never won an Ironman, and indeed, never before has she graced the hostile land of the Big Island. Killy Jones is lying second about a minute back and looks to be settling in well. She won a silver medal in her native Australia in the 2000 Olympic Games. Holding third among the women is Joanna Zeiger, and she can see Michele Jones about 15 seconds ahead, all doing their best to stave off the challenge that is certain to come. Not yet in contention, but for how long is five times winner Natasha Badman. Swiss champion is great on the bike and unbeaten this year. 
she sees this event as her own, having also finished second twice on what were presumably her off days. 15 miles in, and Chris Bauer is 39 seconds ahead of Michele Jones. Badman almost nine minutes back. This is Germany's Faris Al Sultan, the leader. As a result of being the first to hit mile 42, he received the Timex Ironman watch bonus. The rest of the star-studded field just tries to keep up with his pace on the extreme heat of the Queen K Highway. Last year's champion, Norman Stadler of Germany, he proved, contrary to popular belief, that you could win this race by just being great on the bike. So far, he's been less than. In his first two trips to this race, Faris Al Sultan was top 10, so it's no big surprise to see him in the lead. Competitor 179, John Blaze. Everything looks good for him, but it really does not. Essentially, John's been given a death sentence. The cruel disease has already rendered his hands almost useless, but his effort today is not. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dreams, for the adventure of being alive. I want to know if you can live with failure yours and mine, and still shout at the edges of a lake, river or mountain, Yes, I am a warrior poet. It doesn't interest me to know where you live or how much money you have. I want to know if you can get up after a night of grief and despair, weary and bruised to the bone, and do what needs to be done for someone you love. I want to know if you can be alone with yourself and truly like the company you keep in the empty moments of your life, and still remember me, your friend, Blaze Man. The ALS Warrior Poet. We always expected that we, there might be a phone call that John has had an accident, he's broken a leg, or God forbid, maybe even something worse. But we were never expecting to get a phone call from our son to tell us that, you know, I think I've got ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. After his diagnosis, I said to him, John, you're coming home to live, not die. My parents have been strong so far. I just think what's happening is um, a family's learning to deal with something they never thought they'd have to deal with. If John was to ask you how he learned to tie his shoes, he would give you a, a story about my dad just got fed up sat me down and he said we're going to learn this and we did the first time in my life on one of our training walks i had to tie his shoes and i said to him john you're making me appreciate all of the little things in life and he didn't say anything, he just kind of cocked his head and said, yeah, I know, Dad. He started watching the Iron Man in high school. And I think in the back of his mind, he always knew that one of these days he would do an Iron Man, and it would probably be in Hawaii. Why is it an important race to me? It's just, it just is. It's always been and it always will be. And I think when I'm sitting in a wheelchair, uh, down the road I'll know that I have uh, fought the great fight. If I had a wish to be granted to me, it would be at 7 o'clock in the morning, Hawaiian time, 
John into What a girl and scream, Jonathan. So that he could hear it. So far, John is all right, with plenty of company. Because of the ALS, his hands are unable to grab water bottles, and that forces him to use a tank and a long straw to hydrate. His story takes your mind in a million directions, but today, he has only one. Now, after 32 miles of the bicycle section, McKeeley Jones and Dee Griesbauer have been locked together in the lead. Currently, it's the turn of McKeeley Jones to set the pace. For the last 10 miles, though, the Australian and the American have been throwing it about. New England's Dee Dee Griesbauer, in her first shot at the World Championship, is showing no fear of what is still to come. For her, the race is right here, right now. Ever conscious of the strictly enforced drafting rules, Dee Dee accelerates and takes the lead back again. Riding on this wide, exposed highway in years gone by, athletes have been known to be blown from their bicycles. But today, the gods smile on the leaders. There's hardly any wind. The adversary for a change is the athlete snapping at your heels. No sooner is Jones in front than Griesbauer comes back. This is a fight between two great competitors, with no quarter given or expected. And the champion, Natasha Badman, she doesn't know anything about this. She is still many minutes behind. Side by side, momentarily, now Jones retakes the lead for Australia. The American is always close at hand. Both are Ironman World Championship rookies, but Dee Dee knows that McKelly Jones is a revered triathlete over the shorter distance, and she has a big reputation. Let's now rejoin Al Troutwig with the men. The story in the men's race is that German Faris Al Sultan still looks great. Plus, he's capable of 255 in the marathon. The German who trains in the United Arab Emirates before the season is taking advantage of lower heat and almost no wind. In second place, Sjörbjörn Sienbaum. Translated, his first name means Thunder Bear, and it's apropos. Notice his aerodynamic position, the arms in close, his head down low. Some triathletes have even spent time in wind tunnels for research. Chris Lieto and defending champion Norman Stadler whip through the halfway turnaround in the village of Javi. But the dilemma for everyone is clear. Nobody is gaining ground on this guy, Faris Al Sultan. His lead is growing, and he's using last year's performance by another German, Norman Stadler, to push the bike as hard as he can. For years, German riders watched huge bike leads evaporate in the marathon. Last year, Stadler proved his strategy can work, and Faris Al Sultan remembers. He's just incredible. In the last years, it was always that everybody was preparing just for the run, tried to save energy for the run, and uh, it, it became more like a runner's race, and Norman turned that around. Now everybody thinks about the cycling again. It can't be overstated. In the minds of the top pros, the game is different now. On the climb to Javi, Natasha Bodman is stopped by a race official to be penalized for drafting somewhere back there. The four-minute penalty will be served at the end of the bike. This has to test even her upbeat personality. The operative phrase might be, ach du liebe. Way behind on the harsh Queen K Highway in the world of the physically challenged, Sarah Reinertsen has words of good cheer. She's on a mission she said she would undertake the moment her Ironman of a year ago had to be painfully ended when she missed the cutoff time. She's tough for a reason. My parents always treated me like any other kid. And uh, when I fell, my mom didn't always rush up to me to pick me up. Sarah's gonna pick herself up. It was a really important lesson. 
for me to learn that. Sarah was raised to hear the word can't and say, excuse me? But when she reached the end of the bike portion of the race last year, she had taken too long and was hearing that exact word. Knowing her spirit and her heart were still strong, she fixed the one thing she could. I'm really excited about my new bike, my new ride. It's uh, a custom frame. I went out to the Cannondale factory and they measured me for a custom bike, so it's a different geometry and it fits me so much better. I am much more proportioned on it. I can control the frame better. It's so much lighter. I find that when I'm climbing hills, I'm able to climb faster. Uh, they did a really hot new paint job on it and uh, it's got my name on it. And we also, on the seat tube, uh, it says unfinished business. And so it's really been about the unfinished business I have here on this island. To cross that finish line, I mean, really, it's, it's history in the making. I mean, no woman's done what, what I've attempted to do. Day to day, I live a pretty ordinary life. And I think we all want to do something extraordinary. And um, for me, when I cross that finish line, I know that I will have done something extraordinary. It's really hard to find a way to inspire people. But Sarah does that every day. Right now, it looks like all the bike work is paying off. She looks strong, smooth, and so much better than last year. Back to the men's race. Norman Stadler has been forced to the side of the road. And he sees a blur of Peter Reed passing by. No support vehicle in sight yet. The best he can do is try something. Hey, you want a spare wheel, Norman? Finally, help arrives, but the race is leaving him behind. And every second feels like a minute as Faris Al Sultan continues to extend his lead with no sign of withering. Stadler reaches DEFCON 3. How much blue did you take? Hell. Torbjorn Sinbala is making progress, gaining about 30 seconds to now trail by 309. Then Chris Lieto, who has fallen to 520 back. These are excruciating moments for the defending champion. Peter Reed passed Stadler long ago, and even he is 728 back. Stadler is an awesome rider, but he is very frayed around the edges and dealing with the reality that to win here, you really can't have this happen. A flat tire. Why today of all days? This could drive you crazy. In the lava fields, a check of the leadership of the Ford Ironman Triathlon World Championship reveals a lot of names who haven't won this race before. It's an exciting proposition. Meanwhile, if there's anyone who can come back after the brutal flat tire experience, it's Norman Stadler, the defending champion. Here he catches Tim DeBoom, a two-time champion. That's a good sign and a reason to keep on pushing. For DeBoom, it feels like sayonara. For the first time in his career, Stadler is feeling the weight of wearing number one. It's heavy, as Faris al Sutan wears the weight of leading the race. His lead is shrinking. Torbjörn Sinbala of Denmark has moved up to second place, and the lead is now down to a little over a minute. Peter Reed is now a big mover, 5.08 behind. The clock is moving in the right direction. 80 miles have been covered by the leading women now, and Joanna Lorne is finding the distance a little more daunting than defending champion Natasha Badman. Now almost 10 minutes behind runaway Michele Jones, Badman still has a lot of work to do. She moves into third, leaving just Dee Dee Griesbauer between herself and Jones. 
After the big show resistance, Didi has cracked a little and is falling away from the lead. For McKelly Jones, the road is becoming even more lonely, but with two Australian grit, she digs in. Stadler hits DEFCON 4. Another flat. <laughs> Two flats in one race is too much to take. <laughs> and while Paul Norman Stadler was in trouble with his bike, Faris Al Sultan was in trouble with his body. And right behind, there was a Danish rider coming quick. No, I am done. Another. Bye, now it's, I'm done, I have no power. DEFCON 5, total shutdown. And Torbjorn Sinbala was over a minute, now he's just seconds behind Al Sultan. I can help you, bro. If you want. Not defending is very hard. Take your time if you want. If you want to, you want to, uh, you want to sit in the back of the van, just wait a few minutes and decide. It's okay. <laughs> And one man's sadness and despair is another man's joy and pleasure. Because Torbjorn Sinbala is about to take the lead. He's now heading the race towards the finish of the bike section back in Kona. This is his best chance to win this event. The most horrible words for a triathlete to hear? Let me remove your chip. One man, whom Peter Reeve is going to keep an eye on this time, is no more, as he now moves through the field. And Torborn Sinbala conceded 18 minutes to Al Sultan in the marathon last year. He'll need to do better this time, but he has the lead. He ripped off one of the fastest bike rides in Ironman history, and Torbjorn Sinbala is the first to reach T2. The transition from bike to marathon. The fans and volunteers have been craving a little action, and he is giving it to them as fast as possible. He has never been in this position before. Urgency, obvious. Faris Al Sultan is next in T2. They are two leaders with glorious potential to win this. Sinbala begins the 26.2 miles and does not feel the need to grab a last-minute hydrator. Mistake or not. Al Sultan, on the other hand, treats this station like he's on a shopping spree, grabbing a little bit of everything available. Sinbala let it fly on the bike, and now he has to back it up. Always the hard part. The Peter Reed presence is still looming large, and here he is with Chris Lieto. Cameron Whiteoff, another player. He's there, too. It's not Reed's first rodeo. The three-time champion is quick to join the marathon. This is doable. Chris Lieto, an American surprisingly playing with the big boys, is next. And the day has warmed to the point where this is going to be one hot Hawaiian marathon. Sinbala in front gets a little relief next to the ocean, but the lava fields will kill that. He's not looking fluid, and it's very early. Cameron Brown and Rutger Beeky make it to T2, hoping to get into the mix. 
to another Iron Man duel, and two men who've dealt with their accidents and moved on. Carlos Molina, who Mark Harriman's used for inspiration, is now in the lead, heading down from Javi. Second place is Mark Harriman's. The two love dueling with each other, but this is Molina's last Iron Man, making this Harriman's last chance to get him. Carlos knows it's always cool to go out on top. Among the women, 100 miles has passed by. There are 12 to go to transition. Didi Griesbauer is fighting to her limits. Her determination to match Mikaly Jones has begun to tell on the woman from New England. The two have expended a lot of effort trying to match one another. And the first to crack is Didi. She's racing into the unknown. The body is complaining. She knows she still has to hang in for another 45 minutes. Just how much longer can she hold on to second? Because Natasha Badman is closing in. Natasha faces a four-minute drafting penalty for the first time in her career when she gets the transition. But right now, her sights are on the horizon. And so too is Didi Griesbauer. The pass by Natasha Badman is quick and effective. Now only McKeeley Jones is in front and the champion is very much back in the game. And there's another Australian too who has moved into sixth place and it's the Ironman Arizona winner Kate Major who lives in California. But the lady in pink, she is the Australian at the moment all eyes are focused on. She's a champion and although this is her first attempt at the world championship, there's no one who doubts she doesn't have the ability to win this race. We're back with the Ford Ironman World Championship just as McKeeley Jones enters the second transition. She is still out in front. Now she has to prove herself in the run. She's in no man's land here. She's never been here before. Meanwhile, Natasha Badman on the bike is now just on the outskirts of Kona. She has continued to close in. And Kelly Jones is on her way as she receives her bag and heads into the change tent. Natasha Badman arrives in second place. She's made up four minutes on the bicycle section on Jones. Now she'll lose four minutes in the sin bin. Kelly Jones now exits at T2. If she does a great run, she will win the event. What an entry. The run course is a full marathon of 26.2 miles and leaves Kona along the Leahy Drive to the turnaround at St. Peter's Church. Then it's out to the notorious Energy Lab and back to the finish in Kona. Sitting out a four minute time penalty must seem like a lifetime for Natasha Badman. For Torbjorn Sinbala, it was nice while it lasted. Faris Al Sultan also in the picture, it's easy to see who has the freer stride. The inevitable happens. And while these passes are almost always permanent, with the way things have gone in the women's race, you never know. The two exchanged a few sportsmanlike words. Didi Griesbauer has fought all day, but now pays the price. She runs towards the transition clearly in pain, while Natasha Badman gets ready to leave the sin bin, still smiling. When she goes, she'll be almost 10 minutes back of Michele Jones. Jones is now trying to extend her lead, but she's showing signs of beginning to struggle. How many times have we seen that at this stage of an Ironman? Men's Marathon, Mile 5, the St. Peter's turnaround and the best chance for Al Sultan to gauge his competition in the race he's never won. Kate Major from Australia arrives in T2 and she still hopes to match her third place finish of a year ago. Keely Jones is now preoccupied, snatching at any fluid she can reach, while Natasha Badman is blazing. She's making up ground. And McKeely Jones is in danger of hitting the mythical wall. The split times are good news for Al Sultan. Same pace right now, both at the same pace. Good job. The lead he regained is growing, and Sinbala is fading fast. His goal was top 10, right now, damage control. The Daboom family has had better days. 
Tim and Nicole celebrated championships twice, but since the Iron Man has brought a lot of testing frustration, Tim DeBoom is out. Natasha Bodman spots her legendary prey for the first time on a Lee drive heading toward the turnaround. McKeeley is trying to make first ever Iron Man news on Bodman's turn. More bad news for Sinbala as Cameron Whiteoff and Peter Reed make a swift pass. But when it comes to gaining on the lead, they are not making such progress. Indeed, it's decision time for everybody now. Sinbala is on the defensive, but so too is Michele Jones. She's looking fatigue in the face. But at least she wins the Timex Ironman watch bonus. Behind her now, Natasha Badman was almost 10 minutes. Now she's six and three quarters and gaining fast. Didi Griesbauer has learned a lesson the hard way. Highly competitive in the beginning, hanging on now. But she's learned a lot and she'll be back. Kate Major is getting stronger with every stride. It's hot enough to believe the lava is still flowing in the fields as Al Sultan makes his way to the turnaround cauldron called the Energy Lab. It's a place where Peter Reed has had some career-defining moments, but today he's not gaining yet, and maybe let the bike race get away from him. The news in the race is the charge of Rutger Beeky, a little off the radar until now. The Ford Ironman Triathlon World Championship is a torturing celebration of three disciplines. Germany's Faris Al Sultan was near the front of the swim and the bike, and at the front of the marathon, where the pretenders always get discarded. Right now, this looks like an effort to treasure. This race has become John Blaze's way of spitting in the face of ALS. But the dream is in jeopardy. He's off the bike, and the cutoff clock is ticking. 17 miles to go. Missing that clock a year ago brought Sarah Reinertsen to tears. Right now, it's a different feeling for her. For Blaze, it's cramps, and an insidious disease that he tries to stretch out of his afflicted body. I'm not angry yet. I think anger is going to maybe possibly come down the road when I can't do the stuff I used to do. I've been so focused on being a voice for ALS that uh, I haven't had time really to be angry. Every night you go to bed and it's a new movie. You, you light up like a pinball machine. Some nights your back's, you know, on fire, twitching. Some nights it's in your legs. Some nights it's in your throat. It's everywhere. It's been 70 years and we've got nothing on ALS. The best they can tell you is that the average person lives between uh, two to five years. And after about one year of diagnosis, you just go downhill real quick. The doctor basically offered me the same thing he, they would offer. They offered Lou Gehrig in 1939. They're not any further along. John's fatalistic view is based on reality, which right now includes getting back on the bike, somehow getting through this, and realizing that today he can still do this. Because right now, today is what he has. It's what we all have. 6 miles to go in the men's marathon. World championship on the line. And Faris Al Sultan 645 in front. That's a good scenario to start dreaming of this really happening. Because it's not for Peter Reed. He doesn't look like the usual marathon monster at all. With his threat removed, attention switches to Cameron Brown, who's coming on. So much so that the positive feedback of passing comes quickly. Here, Brown does away with one soaring Rutger Beeky. And now here, Peter Reed. There's only one challenge left for him, and it's Faris Al Sultan. And Cameron Brown shouldn't do the math to fuel his effort.
Still, the prestige that could come from a pass and a charge like this is impossible to calculate. Times like this, you don't look back. You remember Ironmans that have been lost in the home stretch of a Lee Drive. Makili Jones is finding the big difference between the shorter triathlons she has dominated here in Kona and this lesson in baking. The pressure and pursuit by Natasha Bodman has been dogged. Just like the four minute penalty never existed. The ease with which Bodman handled that was almost all you needed to see. At 38, Bodman looks like she has the energy of a rookie and the knowledge of an ace. To look back now on Faris Al Sultan's short career is to be able to say, you could have predicted this. A steady rise leading to this proud charge toward the finish line that is his. But triathletes know something like this is never guaranteed. The result, an indescribable feeling. He has reached his destination. I was sure I'd catch Torbjörn, but I knew Peter is close behind, and yeah, I, I didn't think that I can keep him away from me, but it was just the race of my life. Kelly Jones has been alone for almost seven hours now, and here in the Energy Lab, a place where the best have won and indeed the greats have lost, Mikkeli is about to meet her match. Natasha Badman finally has reached her target. She's run her down in the Energy Lab. With just time for a few pleasantries, Badman presses on, now free to fly to the finish. It's been a tough chase, but she has the lead now. 38, the Swiss ace is showing no signs of slowing down. Natasha Badman's face has changed now from a grimace to a smile as she sees Kona over the hill. Once there, a sixth title will be hers. She's happy. Still on the bike course is the courageous John Blaze. Make the yes, Kona is closing in, but is it coming fast enough? Everybody is willing him on. At the transition, waiting for the first sight of John Blaze are his anxious parents, Bob and Mary Ann. They know how much this means to John. Will he make it and move into the final phase? Time waits for no one. The 2005 Ford Ironman World title has gone to Wonder Woman Natasha Badman of Switzerland. Yes, she's done it all before, five times to be exact, but last is always best. <laughs> Natasha now will join Ironman legends Dave Scott and Mark Allen with six wins apiece, but she still stays too short of Paula Newby Frazier, but she's left herself time to fix that. mosaic today and it worked out perfect the woman she beat mckeely jones second at her first attempt at the world title while kate major finishes third for the second time in two years and new zealand's joanna lawn she crosses the line fourth
In Hawaii, the men's race was dominated by Faris Al Sultan. He won by more than five minutes. While Natasha Badman, she won by a scant two minutes 21. Understandably happy at the finish. Sarah Reinertsen has unfinished business. I want to run across that mat to stop my time. Beating the cutoff clock so she can run a marathon and feel that joy. After racing for ten and a half hours, Carlos Molina is a champion in his last race here. <laughs> Iron Man says, thanks, Carlos. John Blaze's dream of beating ALS if just this day, is alive. He's made it in time to the relief of a rejuvenated mom and dad. And then you remember, he has 26 miles to go. Just like Sarah Reinertsen, who smiles at the opportunity and at the fact that everybody knows her and what she's trying to do. For John Blaze, there's plenty of time to start running. This deserves a few high fives. Business is almost finished in T2. After all, it's only 15 minutes to the cutoff. But Robert McKeague is still there at 80, trying to become the oldest man to ever finish this race. A spirited longtime accountant, playing with the numbers, and a great personality. John Blaze still isn't running as the sun sets on the Pacific. This time, the deadline is midnight. After that, everything's for naught. The brain teaser for all these late starters is that they can hear the names of all the finishers announced just yards away. Then you think to yourself, I have a long way to go before I hear my name. John Blaze and everybody else. Still going after starting at 7 a.m. Then comes sundown. when the Iron Man looks like a string of lost souls who aren't lost at all. They know exactly what they want. Out of the darkness into light comes Robert McKee, trying to prove this is possible at 80. He started out just trying to keep up with the grandkids. And on the leg she was born with, and another that's a marvel, Sarah Reinertsen wants to show those who have given her a lifetime filled with what she can't do that they were wrong, and that when mom forced her to do things on her own, she was right. With a different type of clock ticking away, ALS victim John Blaze still walks. He's sure the day will come when even this will be a miracle, but not today and not yet. The finish line will prove that. Midnight, John. Midnight. Winner of the Ford Built to Do More Award is Carrie Ann Massey from Massapequa, Long Island. Congratulations. The Ford Ironman Triathlon World Championship is brought to you by the new 2006 Ford Explorer, the best explorer ever. 
and by E-Trade. E-Trade Financial. Their son has ALS, and then he told him he was going to try and be an Iron Man. That's what Luke Gehrig was, and look how history remembers him. Once they wanted only to keep their little boy safe. And now what they want is this for him. He's running out of time. At mile 25, they wait. He has a way of well, I'm making mom and dad go gray. <laughs> Pick a stronger word than hope. Keep it up. You're doing a great job. Yeah. You're almost there, buddy. You're almost there. Yeah. Yeah. And is waiting for you at the end of the good finish job. line. That's one good. Yeah. Only a mile, Bob. There was a coach in Sarah Reinertson's life that once told her that she couldn't play with the other kids with her one leg. Part of why she does this is that next time, the coach says, Go out there, kid, and get him. Come on, John, join them there in that magical place where dreamers go. Robert McKee will be there waiting for you. The grandkids are now trying to keep up with him. He'll share with you an 80-year-old's wisdom. Live more than your neighbors. Unleash yourself upon the world and go places. Go now. Giggle. No. Laugh. And bark at the moon like the wild dog that you are. Do you believe in fate? Well, today, John's fate is to make it to the line. Understand that this is not a dress rehearsal. This is it, your life. Face your fears and live your dreams. Take it all in. Yes, every chance you get, come close. And by all means, whatever you do, Get it on film. John Blaze, you are an Iron Man. And we do have it on film. <laughs>